Discovery's Legacy interview series. This is the second year doing this. It's being brought to you by the Mexico, Mexican Mining Center, and my name's Thomas Eckert. Um, we're here today with Linda Bloom, president of Analytical Solutions Limited, right? From Canada, Toronto, so welcome. Um, Linda, the title of your presentation here at the conference is Understanding and Communicating Uncertainty. Could you share with us some of the most important takeaways from your speech, upcoming talk? Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, much appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. So I realized afterwards that my title, talking about uncertainties, could actually sound like it's talking about your private life too. We all have uncertainties in our life, uh, but it's a little bit more specific than that. It's about rocks. Um, and in particular, my expertise is sampling and assaying uh, for rocks. Uh, primarily, I end up looking at gold projects because they are really difficult to sample and assay. And the uncertainty I'm talking about is the uncertainty associated with those assays. So our problem is inherently that gold is worth actually a lot of money, and so not very much ends up being worth something. So we have projects in Mexico where the average grades are one part per million. So one part per million, if anybody goes, oh, it's one part per million. But if you think about that, one part per million is a really, really tiny amount. So the way I try and describe that is I say, you know, uh, there's 50,000 grains of rice in a kilo bag of rice. And the equivalent of one part per million would be one twentieth of a rice grain in that one kg bag. And that's what we're trying to measure that's what we're trying to sample, and somehow people make money doing this. But, but it's, there's a lot of work that goes into trying to understand the sampling statistics and the uncertainty with every single assay that we produce. Right, well, how can we ensure that data are a sufficient quality for interpretation, and what is the risk of poor quality data? Well, Tom, I'm so glad you asked that question. <laughs> So my specialty, in addition to the sampling and assaying procedures, is quality control. And a lot of people are doing quality control. We're doing a good job. We're doing better than uh, 10 years ago. Uh, so what we do is we put in uh, reference materials or standards so we can test the laboratory. So we're sending our samples to a laboratory. We're not there when the work is being done. Knowing ahead of time what the results are, you mean? Our, that's to the test at the laboratory we don't know our samples, right? Mm -hmm. We don't know what's in our samples. But what we do is we provide these standards that come in a little um, pouch, and that I know the value of. I will say to you, this material that I'm sending you has a value of one gram per ton gold. And then you send it to the lab. The lab should report very close to one gram per ton gold, and then you say, you infer, uh, then my samples must be okay. But if the lab returns a number like five grams per ton, it's not okay. Okay, and, and but you would say, "Oh, the lab's made a mistake. I need to investigate." Okay, but the question then is: Is the lab wrong, or could it be <laughs> your and own you data center, or is right? it a question uh, listen, of re happened doing? Where the geologist put in the wrong sample. They put in the wrong standard. So right. we start from the real basics. Um, and then, if necessary, I go and visit the laboratory and I, I check their procedures. Uh, we're really looking to do things like prevent fraud, for example. Yeah, okay. Um, and you'll in a 43-101 report 40, or something. That, so these are all the kinds of uh, uncertainties that are reported in a 43-101. So in terms of big data applied to mineral exploration, um, how does data quality impact results? I guess you've somewhat answered that already. But so my, uh, one of my uh, interests is uh, working with data. I do a lot of statistics with multi-element data, with geochemical data, and I hear a lot of people talking about big data in mining, and it's very trendy, and we're having million-dollar prizes. But fundamentally, if you have, it's that garbage in, garbage out story, right? If you have garbagey data with poor uncertainty, or maybe even biased, right? You never had the right number to begin with, and you put that into some fancy computer program and you make big data analysis, guess what? Garbage out. Brex. <laughs> uh, well, well, maybe not quite so That's bad, a more extreme but, yeah, case, yeah, but. <laughs> but. But the, the, what I'm concerned about is we have this new technology. It could be shown, perhaps, to be very useful. 
it's the same problem always with technology uptake. If you go in too fast without understanding the rules, without understanding what you can and cannot use to generate a useful answer, some people are going to be disappointed. They're going to spend money drilling targets that turn out to be uh, false targets, and they'll be disappointed. Right. Well, Linda, thank you. On behalf of the Mexican Mining Centre and Discoveries Mining Conference 2017, we'd like to express our sincere appreciation and, and uh, for your generous participation and time during this uh, 2017 Legacy Interview Series. Thank you, Tom.